I'm Lindsay Hurth and I'm the founder of Scent Workshop and today I'm going to be teaching you candle making fundamentals. First you're going to need some equipment. So we're going to start with a metal or glass pitcher that you're going to melt the soy wax in. You'll also need soy wax, about 8 ounces. This is a 16 ounce bag so we're going to be using half of that. Some candle containers of course, you can use any jar that you've got that's around 8 to 12 ounces. Um, stir sticks, some candle wicks, and one ounce or two if you want to mix some fragrance oils, and some measuring cups, and then finally some clothespins to secure your wicks. I'll be using our candle kit that we have available on scentworkshop.com, but you can also get these supplies at candle wholesale stores or even Amazon. We're gonna begin by melting our wax first, and you can use an electric griddle like I'm gonna be using today, or you can also use your stove top with a double boiler method at home. And to start, we're going to pour eight ounces of wax into our pour pitcher. Again, this is a 16 ounce bag, and I'm only gonna need half of this, so I'm just gonna eyeball it and pour eight ounces of soy wax in here. Whenever you're making candles, you want to measure all the products by weight and not volume. And I've got my griddle set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This should take it about 15 minutes to melt to 185 degrees. And that's the target temperature that we're going to be using to melt our soy wax. Um, I recommend using the instructions on the soy wax container though. It'll tell you the temperatures that are ideal for that wax. So we're gonna let this heat up a bit and we're gonna be sure to stir it const or not constantly, but often. Um, the more we stir it, the smoother the candles are going to turn out. So we'll stir that every few minutes and wait for it to melt. While we're waiting for our wax to melt, we're going to wick our containers. And to do that, we're going to take our candle wick. The candle wick has a metal plate on the bottom to help secure it to the candle container. And we're gonna take a wick sticker. We're gonna place that onto the metal part, press firmly. Then there's a little white pull tab on the bottom. We're just gonna remove that. It's gonna reveal a very sticky sticker and we're gonna place that right down into the center of the container and press firmly. Now there's a bit of a science when it comes to trying to figure out which wick size is appropriate for your container. If you get the candle kit from Scent Workshop, these are already pre-sized and they will work properly for that size of container. If you buy your wicks online, see if they have a wick guide that'll show you the appropriate size of the wick for the container that you're intending to fill. Next, we're going to talk about how to choose or mix a scent for your candle. So in our scent workshops, we always start with, how do you want to feel? We believe that scent is a really powerful tool to help evoke certain emotions and to help you feel exactly how you want to feel. So we start with this question because it helps to narrow down the ideal scent for your product. And if you think about scent as a color, it becomes even more simple to help match your scent to the mood. So. For example, if you wanted to feel calm, you might start with scents in nature that are blue or green or even purple, things like lavender or eucalyptus or aquatic notes. If you wanted to feel cozy, you might start with things that remind you of a fireplace like firewood, cedar, marshmallow, but brown neutral tones are really great for cozy scents. If you wanted to feel happy or joyful, we'd recommend something citrusy or fruity, maybe floral, but think of pinks, yellows, and oranges. And if you're feeling festive, like I'm gonna be using our holiday kit, I'll be using scents that are red and green to help me make the sense of the holidays. So cranberry, Fraser fir, um, mistletoe, peppermint, those are all great festive holiday scents because they're red and green to mimic the sense of the holidays. But essentially what you wanna do is imagine scents as color, and create kind of a color scheme around your mood 
And that's going to help you have a product that's going to elevate your mood for that feeling. When we blend candle scents, we recommend keeping the mix really simple. If you're using fragrance oils or essential oils, we recommend keeping the recipe down to two or three different oils at a time. You can have more scents in your product if you want, but the more scents you have, the more perfumey it tends to smell and sometimes not in a good way. Now you're probably wondering, where do you find fragrances that you love and how do you know if they're good? That is honestly part of the tricky part of the process. And I recommend looking at reviews online. You can go to candle supply wholesale companies. Um, you can also, you know, search Amazon if you want, but always look at the reviews because the people who use these oils are going to give pretty honest feedback about what they thought of the scent, but also how the oil performed in the product that they used. If you're using synthetic fragrances, uh, make sure that you look for things that are phthalate free and that have low toxins in them. That's just going to give you a higher quality product and avoid allergy issues. You can also use essential oils, but please be mindful of the cost of that. Um, you're going to be using about one ounce of oil per candle and one ounce of essential oils can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. The other issue with essential oils is that they don't hold up well to scent usually. So you might not have as strong of a scent throw as if you would with a synthetic oil. Next, I'll be showing you a very quick demonstration of how we would create a custom scent recipe at Scent Workshop. So I'll be using a simple note card that we have in our candle kit, but essentially it's just a card that's gonna help me keep track of the recipe. I've got some mixing cups that I've labeled one, two, and three for the various recipes that I'll be creating. And then I've got two fragrance oils, winter cranberry and mistletoe, because again, I'm trying to create something festive for the holidays. So I'm gonna start out by just adding a drop of scent at a time to my recipe or to my card. And to do that, we're just gonna take the dropper and just add one single drop at a time. And again, the goal here is just to keep track of the number of drops that are going into my cup so that again, I can recreate that recipe later. I am using some plastic measuring cups that have eighth ounce markings on it. So if my recipe has eight drops total, that's gonna be really easy for me to rep replicate it at the end. So that's what I'll aim for. But I've got one drop of each scent in my cup and I'm just gonna smell it. And right now I'm really smelling the mistletoe a lot. So I'm going to add one more drop of cranberry to it and see if I can balance this out. And it's nice, but I also, I think I want to add another drop of the cranberry. So I'm going to go one more. So now I've got three drops of cranberry and one of mistletoe. And I quite like this. And conveniently, it's four drops total, which is easy to get to eight. So that's the recipe I'll be going with. But essentially what you're gonna do is play with the ratio of the oils that you're using to get to a mix that smells good to you. And then you'll recreate that when you go to actually pour your candle. pause on the scent mixing for a second because my wax is definitely heated through now. So I'm just going to remove this from the heat source and I'm going to let it cool. The reason we want to do this is because if we added the fragrance when the wax is at 185 degrees, it would really evaporate all of the fragrance. And so what we want to do instead is cool it down to around 130 to 140 degrees to trap in that fragrance when we add it and that's gonna produce a much stronger candle. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit and we'll continue on our scent process. Next, you're going to weigh the fragrance that you're gonna to add to your wax. And to do this, you're gonna definitely wanna check the manufacturer's instructions for the wax. It should tell you how much fragrance load that wax will hold. And usually for soy wax, it's between six to 12%. And again, this is by weight, not volume. So for example, if we had a 10 ounce candle of soy wax and we could add six to 12% fragrance, we would add 0.6 to 1.2 ounces of fragrance to that 10 ounces of wax. What I'm doing is taking 10 ounces times 0.06 and times 0.12, the 6% and the 12%, 
to get to the max amount of oil that I can put into that 10 ounce candle. Now we've used eight ounces of wax for our candle here and that fragrance load around of 10 to 12%, which is what we use in scent workshop, would come out to 0.8 to 0.96 ounces of wax or of fragrance oil. So we're gonna be filling our one ounce cups just below the rim because again, we're gonna try to put 0.96 ounces of fragrance oil into this cup. So to do that, I'm going to recreate my recipe. So again, I had four parts cranberry or three parts cranberry and one part mistletoe. So I'm going to pour this up to the six hash mark because again, I'm trying to double that recipe. So it's going to be six parts to two parts. And now my fragrance oil cup is ready to add to my wax as soon as that wax has cooled down. Stay tuned. So now our candle wax has cooled. It's cooled for about 15 minutes to around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a good pouring temperature. And again, what we're gonna do is take our just less than an ounce of fragrance oil and we're gonna add it to the soy wax. And we're just gonna drop it in. And we're gonna give this a really good stir. I recommend stirring it for at least two minutes. The more you stir your wax, the more smooth your candle will turn out. Sometimes if you don't stir it enough, it'll have kind of divots on the top of the candle and we don't want that. So give this a really good stir for two minutes. And we're going to pretend that I've been stirring it for a full two minutes. And I'll put that to the side. Then we're just going to fill our candle container. We don't want to fill it all the way to the very rim because the first time we light the candle, that wax will expand and then overflow. We definitely don't want that. So I recommend filling it about a quarter of an inch below the rim so that we have space for the wick too. After we've poured the wax, we're going to take our wick and just hold it up straight and take our very high-tech securing device here, our clothespin. And we're just going to open it up and place it on each side of the wick on the rim and then snap it shut. And again, the goal here is just to get it centered and straight so that as it cools, that wick is properly positioned. And again, I'll show you how I'm doing this with an empty one. We're just going to hold it up straight, snap it, and again, we're just trying to get it nice and centered and have that wick straight at the bottom. So we're gonna let this cool. For a candle around 10 to 12 ounces, it's gonna take around 45 minutes for it to cool. But we wanna make sure that it gets very firm and completely solid color like ivory or white on the top. And that's when we know that we can trim our wick. So now we're going to trim our wick on our candle. And again, you can see that it's pretty solid on the top and very white and clear, or rather than clear. And to do this, we are simply going to, let me get a good position here, um, hold the wick up in the center, rest the scissors towards the rim of the container, and then snap. And again, I'm just using a pretty heavy duty kitchen shears here, because again, my wicks are pretty firm and I wanna make sure that I get a good cut. So we're gonna trim it to about a quarter of an inch and this should be a proper height for your wicks. You don't wanna get them too short because if you get your wicks too short, you have a hard time keeping the candle lit, which is not ideal. Now, here's the bad news. <laughs> you have to wait at least three to seven days to let your candle cure before you can light it. And the longer you let it cure, the slower it's gonna burn. So if you, a good test is to see if you can push your thumb into the wax, then it's de definitely not ready. You wanna make sure that you let it cure until that thing is rock solid because that's gonna give you a proper burn. If you don't wait that long, if you lit it right now and it's still soft, it'll burn right down really close to the wick and you've just ruined your candle. So be patient and let it cure properly. When you do let your candle, make sure that you're letting it burn until that wax pool reaches the edge of the container and then blow it out and that wax pool is about a half an inch deep. If you do that every time, you'll have a completely clean jar at the end 
assuming that your candle is wicked properly. And that prevents the tunneling thing where we can't seem to get the side wax to melt and it's really just wasting the candle. So be patient and let your candles burn until they reach the edge of the container. But again, don't ever let a candle burn for more than four hours because then you're risking the container compromising, basically getting too hot and cracking. That is it for candle fundamentals and I hope that you learned something and please check out scentworkshop.com for more information. We've got kits, but we also have more tutorial videos and tips. So we hope you have a great time crafting and happy holidays.